Minister of Trade and Investment Okechukwu Enalema has faltered the recent Brookings report on Nigeria's poverty level. Enalema says the rating of Nigeria as the new global headquarters of poverty is not the true situation of things in the country. He believes the indices used in arriving at the report might have been compiled when Nigeria was in economic recession. Senior Programs Manager, Connected Development, uh, Chambers Umezuluike, joins us now from Abuja to discuss this. Many thanks for joining us, uh, Chambers. Uh, this is not the first time that we hear yeah, the report of the level of poverty growing in Nigeria. You would recall in February this year, IMF released a report corroborated by the World Bank in terms of the level of poverty growing in Nigeria. But what, what perhaps is worrisome with the Brookings report is that the level is now uh, 87 million people are extremely poor in Nigeria and that that figure grows every minute by six persons. Should we take the word of the minister for it that Nigerians have nothing to worry about? No, I, I, I don't think so. I actually think the government, when I say the government, I mean cumulatively, uh, you know, do not have any moral authority to discredit this. Yeah, honestly, because the trends have been there. You, you know, we were in a recession. The recession, you know, was probably a function of low economic productivity. That would probably lead to low per capita income. And from low per capita income, you have poverty, inflation, and some of all those uh, macroeconomic uh, uh, consequences. So the trend, the trend has been there. If you unpack poverty rate as a term, you are going to see, you are going to find uh, life expectancy that's held. One million women die in this country on an annual basis. When you look at education, 10.5 million children are, now, are out of school. Our per capita income has been hovering between 2000 to 2003. Hundred dollars for, for a long time. Look at unemployment. You look at some of all those uh, elements that you could aggregate and know whether a country is poor or not poor. You see that the government doesn't actually have, you know, any moral authority to discredit this. You know, mm -hmm. when some of all these international actors come up with some kind of exciting statistics, the government takes glory and credit. But when it's actually negative, you know, they start saying that this is actually not the actual stuff on ground. I, I think I think that is that is not that is, I, I I don't support that. Um, okay. by this, it actually means that Nigeria, we have more poor people in Nigeria than we have in Congo DRC, that we have than we have in South Sudan, than we have in Yemen, Syria, countries that have been in perpetual, you know, conflict, you know, for a very, very long time, for decades, you know, is, is actually, is actually uh, quite sad. And it actually means that Nigeria has not been able to get a lot of things right in so many sectors. Education, health, talk about agriculture, you know, because poverty is more predominant in the rural areas. Talk about Talk about farmers, you know, having access to markets, having access to improved seats, having access to finance. Then you talk about investments, you know, the fact that jobs are not being created, that for, you know, it's actually a web of a lot of stuff. In, at 1960, poverty rate was actually 15%. And now we're talking at, uh, we are discussing around 60% poverty rate. I think that's actually quite sad, and I don't think the government had any reason to discredit that. Okay, uh, the, the federal government attributed this, uh, uh, says that this report might have been compiled during when the country was in recession. And so uh, it said it might, might, might have been compiled while the country was in recession. But this report was compiled in May of 2018. Now, do you, should Nigerians be worried by this report? Nigeria should be really worried by this report because that means we're actually having more poor people, you know, amongst us. And, and, and that's actually quite sad. You know, the problem has been oil dependence. We've been an oil dependent country for, for decades. If oil, oil prices go south, the whole, the entire country financially would collapse. That's been part of the problem. I don't think, you know, recession, those are still the aftermaths of the recession. But even regardless of the recession, you know, the trends have been there. The fact that Nigeria has not, what are we producing? in the country. Talk about manufacturing, industrialization, jobs being created, entrepreneurship, innovation, technology, in comparative terms with some of our former economic comparators. So this was actually expected. I'm not shocked, you know, to hear about this. But it's actually quite sad. All right. You were talking about some indices earlier on in terms of the human development uh, capital indices that the world might have used to compile this report. One of them you talked about out of school.
school children, which we have today, stands at, at over 10 million out of school children in Nigeria. Maternal mortality. You remember when uh, Bill Gates came to Nigeria, he said Nigeria is like the fourth worst place in the world to be born. He wouldn't want to be born in Nigeria in terms of maternal mortality. Then take a look at the internally displaced persons. As of January, we're ranking, talking, uh, coming from the uh, Census Commission itself, we're ranking between a one point uh, seven million to three million of uh, internally displaced persons. So really, if we're out of recession, why are we not feeling the impact of recession in terms of these uh, indicators? You know, recession is primarily tied to economic productivity, so GDP growth and all that. But it actually takes time. Like, if you say that a country is out of recession, it will take time before that will reflect on the per capita income. And you also know that we are in, actually in a country whereby population explosion is overburdening economic development. So we're having higher percentages of population growth, but at the same time, it's not commensurate with, with development. So it will actually take time. You know, so is is there's a there's a relationship with recession. You know, at, at the same time, it will actually take time before we can actually get over. You know, some of all those uh, uh, elements of uh, uh, macroeconomic consequences that I actually talked about. Like we mentioned rightly, IDPs. You know, out of school children. Hell, look look at primary health care centers across the country. Okay. Is any of them functional? So the, the trend right. has been there. So this is a, this is quite you know, for for those that are quite exposed to the key elements of development, they were probably expecting this. Okay, Chambers, in, in, in ten seconds, what should government do to solve this matter? The the sustainable way to solve poverty is to create jobs. Is through is through entrepreneurship. You know, it's through investments. We have right. to provide an enabling environment for investors to come in and invest. Look at the right. political crisis across the country. How can investors come in and invest? We have to, we have to, we have to attract foreign investments to be able to create jobs. We have to start manufacturing. We have to diversify our economy. We have to decentralize. We have to be an industrial, in, industrialized right. uh, country. Right. So I think every single thing is just towards investments and job creation. All right. Thank you very much, uh, Chambers Mezliki, for talking to us on this issue.